Hey tubes. So today we got a little bit of a different thing. Got this old Pepsi machine that I picked up that uh, wasn't keeping the uh, soda cold. So I did some investigation and uh, lo and behold it has no Freon in it. So I uh, heard about this uh, idea of uh, using duster air because it's got this uh, difluorothane in it which is a um, oh it's a refrigerant that's very similar to R12 and I believe this system uses an R12 not that it really matters because it's completely empty but I figured that I would go ahead and uh, try and get this unit up and running again. Now I've got an actual um, new compressor that I can put into this so no harm you know in trying this idea out but um, I've seen some success on this uh, through the forums and through uh, another gentleman on YouTube. I'll put a link to his uh, video right down here in description. But I just wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit of a rundown as to how I went about doing this. So step one was to put one of these things right here. These bullet piercing valves onto the uh, line. Because these are non-serviceable. And then the second thing I did was hooked up my vacuum gauges to my vacuum pump that I haven't used in about four years. So the uh, next thing that I need to do is shut the pump off. This has been running for about an hour now. And I want to check out what my vacuum is staying at. Now you are going to lose some vacuum. There's nothing you can do about that. It does appear to be holding now. So now the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to turn this valve off just for a moment and get you guys set up here so hopefully you're not staring at my knees All right. <clears throat> I got the valve turned off what I'm going to do now is go ahead and disconnect this and then we're going to go ahead and take one of these cans of duster. And I bought this side piercing um, can thing off of Amazon. And what I'll do is I'll put a link into that also. But basically what it is, it's got a little Schrader valve in here so that once you pierce the can, your fluid won't leak out. This is good for R134. R12 and um, the oils and stuff. It came with a little adapter that fits into here. And uh, yeah, so enough talking. Basically, put it down at the bottom of the can. Can you get this on? And then we just squeeze it in there. Now the can's pierced. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. Put this up without trying to freeze my hand off. Now we got to open this valve up here just a little bit just to get some free end going. Okay, there we go. We got some free end going. And then I'm going to go ahead and open this valve. Let 
the system fill. Now there should be oil in the system already, so I'm not too worried about the oil. Oh, I figured it would take a lot more than that, barely took anything. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this. Looks like that's about all it's going to take. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this valve right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, that switch plugs here all right go over to the front here turn our thermostat on tell what's going on with it. I'll go ahead and open this again. And we'll open this can. Yeah, see it was definitely going down, losing some pressure. Pumping some pressure I should say. I do believe I'm going to have to put a second can in there. It's, if I remember correctly, I want the gauge to be somewhere, well maybe I'll be okay. It might be okay. Check this up. And they say one trick is to heat the can up to get the gases out of there a little bit more. So. Yeah, I think I might need just another little partial can. All right, well, I'm going to let this run for a little bit and see what happens here. So. If I see any progress, I'll uh, tune you guys right back in. All right, guys. I literally just moved over to the front side here. I haven't done anything. Uh, the gauge is still reading what it was before at the 20. All right. 
I think it's supposed to read at 30, if I remember right, but we'll leave it where it is. But it just came over here, and I touched on the uh, one part here, and it is freezing cold. So I think this might be successful. That's really cold. So, we're going to close this up. Actually, I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put a couple pop cans in here and we'll uh, test these in a little bit here. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna let this sit for oh an hour or two and we'll come back and we'll test everything out, see what it is. But I uh, ended up actually emptying this can totally. So this is 10 ounces basically into that system right there and uh, what I did was I uh, just heated up some water and I put this in some water just to heat the uh, core temperature of it just ever so slightly just enough to inject the remainders of the uh, uh, refrigerant into the system now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to leave in the description here a link to an article that I found comparing um, uh, this diflorothymine or whatever this is. What was it called again? Um, yeah, diflorothymine. Diflorothane. Diflorothane. Try to say that four times fast. Uh, basically, it's got an R value. I, I forget exactly what it is. It's like R. 154 I think it is but it actually compares that R1 let's just say it's R154 uh, it compares that or is R152 yeah it doesn't matter whatever it is uh, it compares that to R12 and R134A R134A is the the current one that is used in all automotive and yada 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 so it actually this stuff actually outperforms R134 and is actually slightly better than R12 so I'll leave that that link for um, for that article and then I'm also gonna leave a link for where I got this and where I got that bullet piercing valve. Um, I, I can leave a link for this here and that there. And I will say this, I absolutely love this two-stage two pump. Um, I've used it probably about five times and it just, it just works. The gauge set, I like it. The only thing that I don't like about it is Shortly after buying it, I ended up breaking the red side, and I don't know how. I ended up ordering a new, new one. I thought it was the yellow side. It turned out it wasn't the yellow side. It was the red side, so I'm going to have to order a red one. But the yellow one I ordered was a longer one. I learned from my father a long time ago when I lost something. He said, well, you'll find it. So if you're going to buy a new one in temporary, buy something that's better or bigger so that's what I did I that was a 30 inch I think it is or 40 inch I bought a longer one of those so that way I have two different lengths if I ever needed it so with that being said guys I'm gonna come back to this in a couple hours I've got a couple cans sitting up there I've got the rest of them in the uh, in the machine I'll actually bring a um, little thermal temperature gun out and we'll check the temperatures in there and see what it is so until then guys don't forget to rate comment and subscribe